On this channel, we dare to look at the most horrifying events, stories, and evidence regarding some of the most hideous and frightening occurrences that have been recorded in history. Tonight's terrifying tale comes from the small market town of Pontefract, situated in West Yorkshire, England. Some of you may have heard of this story, others may be new to the legend that is 30 East Drive, and to the Black Monk myth, an insidious entity that terrorised the young, innocent family who lived at the residence in the 1960s. What happened inside the walls of this seemingly normal house during those carefree years of peace and love? What nightmarish events occurred and tormented the Pritchard family so badly that they had to pack up and leave? Why has no one lived in this now famous house ever since? And what exactly is the malevolent phantom known as the Black Monk, who roams the hallways and bedrooms, waiting to torment and terrorise its next victim? If you like a good Halloween ghost story, this one will not disappoint. Join us as we open the doors and step inside the haunted dwellings of number 30 East Drive, and to a possible encounter with a demonic poltergeist who lies in wait for us within. Hit those lights, sit back, and enjoy. To the common traveller, local resident or visitor to East Street in the town of Pontefract, nothing appears out of the ordinary. By most standards, the area is a normal, everyday street, with normal, everyday houses, and situated in the historical metropolitan borough of Wakefield, in West Yorkshire. If one wishes to visit the medieval country by car, the area and town of Pontefract is just a few miles southwest of the A1 M62 junction. For those travelling to the region by train from London or Manchester, there are direct connections available, all of which bring you closer and closer to the heart of Yorkshire, and to a curious house on a quiet street. The reason we mention the travelling and visiting options is due to the massive influx of temporary dwellers and guests who come from far and wide to visit and stay in the house that started it all. Pontefract Monk Hill Station, on the northern fringes of the town centre, is appropriately named for those who dare to dismount from their normal lives and enter into what has become known as the Poltergeist House and to the resident that never leaves, the Black Monk. If one decides to venture to the town, and specifically that of 30 East Drive, you will find yourself standing amongst the ancient structures and artefacts that the area has to offer, such as the Church of All Saints, as well as the ruins of the old Cluniac Priory and Castle. As one draws nearer to the haunted house, it must be declared in advance that across the road and upon the hilltop lies the site where once upon a time the dreaded gallows once stood. Dare you enter? Before you do, let us go back, back to when it all happened, and to the events that made this ordinary house a symbol of evil incarnate. It was the glorious summer of August 1966. Joe and Jean Pritchard had finally managed to secure their long-awaited move to the suburb of Pontefract, and were looking forward to settling into their new home at 30 East Drive. The couple, along with their two children, Diane 13 and Philip 15, set about unpacking their essentials alongside Jean's mother, Sarah, who would be staying with them for the time being. It is well known that West Yorkshire, and the Yorkshire Dales in particular, are a beautiful, scenic set of landscapes in the north of England. And so the fact that the Pritchards were now living in such an area was a lovely feeling indeed. Unfortunately, this feeling of happiness and personal entitlement would be short-lived. Almost immediately, after they spent the first few nights within their new home. Not much is known about the previous owners or residents within the grounds, but for some reason, the house was beginning to form a stronghold over the family as the summer wore on. Joe and Jean were happy that the move was finally complete. Their belongings were set up and the summer holiday to Devon was still going ahead for them all. And yet, despite the possibility of heading to the blue beaches of the English Southwest, Young Philip decided that he wanted to, or was perhaps compelled to, stay with his grandmother at the house, whilst the remaining members of the family set off on the five-hour car journey southward. This is when things began to occur that would forever haunt the Pritchards, the house itself and the town of Pontefract forevermore. 
Alan Murdy, a barrister by day and paranormal investigator by night, has investigated numerous hauntings on both sides of the Atlantic, including the terrifying case known as the Enfield Haunting. A member of the Society for Physical Research and chairman of the Ghost Club, Murdy has also written various accounts and columns on the supernatural. In the case of East Drive, Murdy would document in detail the strange events that befell young Philip and his grandmother in his written pieces, when the lights went out. According to the barrister, during those nights of terror both parties felt, cold gusts of wind blowing through the house and shaking doors and windows despite it being warm and sunny outside. Not only would the sudden dip in temperature confuse and chill them to the bone, it is well noted that during the hauntings, a whitish powder would suddenly begin to manifest all by itself, as if from nowhere, within the living room quarters, as well as a set of puddles appearing on the kitchen floor, despite no leaks being found. Murdy also notes that a horrible green froth would overflow from the taps and shoot out at various intervals, leaving the boy and his grandmother in a state of fear and bewilderment. From there, during a single evening, wardrobes would abruptly shake, the house lights would continuously turn on and off without warning, furniture would mysteriously be found overturned, and objects within the home would disappear or move on their own. Witnessing the poltergeist performing its magic firsthand, Sarah grabbed Philip and decided to make a beeline for a nearby house, which belonged to her daughter, Mary Kelly. It's important to note that the testimonies reported and documented on this case are naturally up for debate. However, it would appear that whatever was tormenting Sarah and her grandson that evening had followed them to Mary Kelly's house, as the hauntings didn't stop there. According to the proclamations by those at the time, when Philip decided to enter into his aunt's kitchen for a drink, he would be greeted with another barrage of poltergeist activity. Tea, sugar and other ingredients were tossed in the air, spread across the walls and flooring, and again the lights were being turned on and off by an unknown entity. Concluding that her family was indeed being preyed upon by some sort of ghostly hellion, Sarah screamed the words, stop it, as loud as she possibly could, in a last minute attempt to drive the spirits from her loved ones. As if acknowledging the challenge and sensing the desperation in her voice, the demon responded by creating a loud bang from the nearby hallway within Mary Kelly's home, before all went quiet. As the night wore on and the early morning hours chimed on the clock, Sarah, Philip and Mary Kelly hesitantly returned to East Drive to inspect the damage that had been caused by the invisible monster, showing the terrified threesome that it had also returned to the property by shaking a set of drawers violently in one of the bedrooms. Sarah took her grandson to stay with a friend and called the police, as well as a paranormal investigator. Unfortunately, all they could come up with was that the house was indeed emitting strange energies within its walls, and that a poltergeist was very much a possibility, although the malignant spirit ceased its activity and remained hidden for a full two years following this event. The family, especially Sarah, knew that things would never be the same again, and that whatever this was, was never going to leave that house. As dreaded by the family, after two long, happyish years passed, and with the phantom staying out of sight, it returned, this time with a vengeance. Not content with terrifying an aging grandmother and teenage boy, the insidious spectre set its sight on the youngest of the family, Diane. The frightened 13-year-old began to hear loud banging noises every night. Throughout the night, coming from the walls of her bedroom, which grew louder and more threatening as time went on. Not knowing what else to do, trying to fend off the spirit with ignorance and determination only made the hauntings escalate to violent extremes. The horrendous, sickening encounters consisted of the demon physically throwing Diane out of her bed, as well as dragging her by her hair out of the bedroom and down the hallway and stairway. The aggressiveness and physicality of the presence was growing stronger by the day and draining every ounce of the family's strength, emotionally, psychologically, as well as physically. With each night that passed, the entity grew more vicious and on occasion would briefly reveal itself to the troubled household. Documented testimony by the Pritchards state that when the poltergeist activity was at its worst, members of the family began to see a shadowy figure 
which to all intents and purposes, appeared fully clothed in a black robe with its face covered by a large hood, much like a monk tunic and cowl. The figure became known as Fred amongst the members of the family, and would come face to face with Joe and Jean on a few occasions, forcing them to attempt a cleansing of the home through an exorcist, vicar, and even the police. After failed attempts to banish Fred, and unable to stay any longer as the figure was continuing to manifest itself in front of their eyes, the family had to admit defeat and decided to move out of the premises. As of today, the Pritchards were the last known residents to live at 30 East Drive. However, the house itself remains accessible and open for people to pay money to stay and attempt the summoning of one of the most vicious spirits ever to roam the earth. So who was Fred? And what could he possibly have wanted by subjecting a young, innocent family to such a horrid ordeal over the course of a few years? Eventually, the entity would become nicknamed the Black Monk of Pontefract throughout the town and across the country. Multiple investigations from paranormal experts, historians, and reporters would manage to dig up some historical significance as to the identity of the so-called Man of God. Tom Cuniff, a writer and supernatural specialist, declares that during the reign of Henry VIII, a monk was supposedly hanged at the gallows, which geographically is directly across the street from where 30 East Drive sits. Although no official records exist, the friar had seemingly raped and murdered a young girl, similar to the age that Diane was during her haunting, before meeting his demise at the hands of the infamous king. Cuniff makes the case that whoever the cleric was, the deceased spirits remained in the vicinity of Pontefract and settled in on the grounds of East Drive, where he continues to seek retribution for his execution. Others believe that the depraved apparition is that of Richard II, also known as Richard of Bordeaux, who was King of England from 1377 until he was deposed in 1399. The son of Edward, Prince of Wales, is rumoured to have starved to death whilst imprisoned at Pontefract Castle which originally stood quite close to the modern-day address, although the manner of his death and possible motives for poltergeist activity are subject to debate. Another theory as to who the monk is and why he roams the house of 30 East Drive was discussed by writer Colin Wilson in his book Poltergeist. When discussing the black monk, Wilson takes a different approach when he states that the entity is perhaps one of a number of poltergeists who reside in the building and feed off the negative energies that often erupt in family households, especially those who are feared or tormented. There were occasions when Joe and Philip Pritchard's egos would collide. However, a natural occurrence for a teenage boy and his father to argue or disagree would then be exploited by Fred and result in countless instances of poltergeist activity. And yet, despite the theories, discussions and speculation regarding East Drive and the ghosts that live within its walls, no one has been able to say for sure who or what it is, or have they? With the house generating cash through the visitors and paranormal investigators looking to spend the night, many have shared their experiences online or via live broadcasts. One of those to present possible evidence of the malevolent creature was Peter Bolton and Rob Hughes from Ghost Inspector's Paranormal Group. The creepy image appears to show a hooded figure, its face in full view, within the reflective surface of a mirror hanging in the residence. The mirror itself is situated at the bottom of the stairs where most of the paranormal activity seems to occur. Another possible sighting from the mysterious monk came from a team of investigators led by 44-year-old mum of four, Claire, from the East Drive Paranormal Group, which is based near the haunted house in Pontefract itself. The image is extremely vivid and instantly identifiable as the bottom half of an arm which is cloaked and appears to be holding a set of rosary beads, common amongst monks and practitioners of the faith. As it's a little distorted, and with no one being present on the staircase at the time, Claire believes that her photograph is the best possible evidence of the entity, which has become a worldwide sensation. Speaking of the events in question, Claire noted how the ghost hunting material and equipment that was being used was especially active at the time of the photograph. She states, we had seen marbles being thrown, and we kept hearing taps and bangs. The arm you can see in the photo is not a solid form. It looks like mist, and is very strange, but you can see the sleeve of a robe hanging down. 
The stairwell and ground floor hallway continued to spark interest and evoke mysterious energy and activity. Kyle Fowler, 28, was also witness to the strange goings on at the house in Yorkshire. Having decided to visit the dwelling, due to his fascination with the unknown and supernatural, Fowler, alongside a psychic medium named Lillian, her husband and son, started their recordings and took pictures in every room of the household. At one point during the investigation, having arrived in the early evening and conducting a seance around 10pm, Kyle decided to head downstairs, where by the looks of the picture presented, a hooded face can be seen behind him as a reflection. It was discussed and declared that this spot in the house projects the most sightings of the Black Monk, and is where Diane Pritchard was dragged towards by the sadistic deviant. Another report came in 2012, when a local neighbour of 30 East Drive asked the current owner of the property, a gentleman named Philip, about the new tenants who had occupied the residence. According to the lady, there was seemingly a lot of noise coming from the house, which was keeping her up at night. Philip, who was emptying the bin store at the time, was taken by surprise at her questioning. He would inform her that he had been unable to find a tenant, and that the house itself had been empty for some time. Video footage is also in abundance when it comes to the famous house. During an evening of paranormal pursuit, Steve Archibald, 36, and his wife Carrie were startled and shocked to capture something on camera that no one has been able to explain with confidence. Self-confessed ghost hunters, the couple who founded Pitch Black Investigations, believe that they have caught the Black Monk in the act of his poltergeist activities, as shown in the video. Accompanied by a small group of thrill-seekers, Steve and Carrie heard a loud crash coming from the hallway. When they arrived to investigate, they were greeted by a children's push pram, which was lying at the bottom of the stairs. The video clearly shows the buggy being pushed by an unseen force as it tumbles down towards the camera. Although many have questioned the validity of the clip, considering the favourable angle of the camera and opportunity to scare the group of timid visitors, it was real enough for a few of the members to escape the house and stay at a nearby hotel. What do you make of it? And so, this is where our tour of 30 East Drive ends. For many, the story of this house, its residents, and especially the activity that occurred during those turbulent years, in the late 1960s, is questionable, and always up for debate. Yet it remains a significant paranormal case in the study of the paranormal and supernatural. No one can imagine what the Pritchards went through during their torment at the hands of Fred. No one knows who or what the Black Monk of Pontefract is, and what he wants. What we do know for sure is that something dangerous and malevolent resides in that house, and is hell-bent on torturing those who set foot inside its walls. Could it be that a small house in the middle of a small town in the heart of the United Kingdom is in fact a portal or gateway to something far more sinister and demonic in nature? Would you enter the house of 30 East Drive? Perhaps you'd think twice after watching this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you right back here tomorrow for another creepy video.